It's a picture of Colin Firth. Framed photo. Kerry, what have you done to Colin Firth? I... Kerry. I farted in front of Colin Firth. <laughs> I had a little part in the film The Mercy. Oh, yeah. And I was... I don't know how it happened. I'm really ashamed of it. It basically, in that very quiet time <laughs> when they say, speed, <laughs> turning over, action, just before you start the acting business. <laughs> really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even style it out. There was no chair to scrape no to make it go. seem like it was a piece of furniture. No way. There was go. nothing I could do. Did Colin say anything? Nothing. He just sort of because he's he's such a you know, he's such a dignified man. Did you touch cloth? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different anecdote, isn't it? That I shat myself in front of Colin. <laughs> <laughs> This is a I farted story, okay. not a following through story. <laughs> Where can we go from there? Lou, rummage, please. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's a real baby. Oh, Baba. Baba. Oh, Baba. Oh. I'm hoping this is a change of gear. <laughs> 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 You didn't kick a baby oh, up the arse, did you, Dem? I'm not having a good night. Come on, Dem. If anyone here is a parent, then I think you'll have done this. <laughs> I... Had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to go and see my wife's father and his stepmom. We had this, and they've got this lovely, comfy couch. And then I was super tired, so I took my son <laughs> and I, I just said, "Look, I've got him." And and <laughs> the word she never lets me forget was. You're not going to fall asleep over there, are you? And I went, no, 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 it's going to be fine. Was she, was she foaming peanuts, as she said that? <laughs> <laughs> she knows I've got previous. So I lie down on the couch, and my lovely baby son, beautiful little boy, is, and I, I shut my eyes, and I open my eyes to kind of the scream as I see him flying through the air... Oh, dear. ..and missing the coffee table by, like, oh. that, and then on the floor, and, of course, then he just cries. But I felt like Anne was, at that moment, the worst father in the world. Well, you, well yeah, cos you could have also ruined the coffee table, so I could have been... <laughs> <laughs> I was looking after my little one-year-old and I... It was totally my bad. I allowed her to bowl down like a bowling ball um, <laughs> down a, a, a red London bus the whole <laughs> staircase. Did you...? But, yeah. Uh, but, did you do... No, no, I didn't do... I didn't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> No, I, just, I was in charge. Mm -hmm. and she go out the bottom of the street. It, it, just, <laughs> it just shouldn't have happened. Raffle tickets, guys. The Phantom of the Propera has delivered some. Oh, Josh. This is me, uh, about 16 years old again. Uh, me and my friends. Uh, someone calls entrepreneur entrepreneurs. <laughs> Some would say entrepreneurs as well. Yes. Uh, we kind of had this idea that we'd um, to raise money for ourselves. We'd do a raffle, but it wasn't a real raffle. Oh. There was no prizes. So we just kind of went to, like, the town centre. Uh, my friend decided to have a Bluetooth earpiece in, which wasn't connected to anything. <laughs> and we were just selling raffle tickets. I think we said it was for, like, a football tour. And we said the prizes were bath stuff. <laughs> um, and the top prize was a trip to the Cotswolds. Which I didn't know what the Cotswolds was at the time. I thought it was, like, a hotel. <laughs> And we just we, and people were honest, but I'd never run a raffle before, so I was giving up like, both strips <laughs> to the people. No, 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 Josh. And they're no. like, how are you going to contact yeah, us? No. I was like, we'll contact you. <laughs> yeah. But we made, made about sixty quid. <laughs> that's, that's fraud. <laughs> Winning the raffle is how I got booked on this show. <laughs> is there anything else that Sophie should be apologising to you for? While, we, while we've got you here, Johnny, we might, we might as well get our money's worth. Well, actually, there is another phone-based oh. story. Okay. So we were you know, coming back quite late from a gig in Brixton, uh, and then someone stole uh, a phone in front of us, uh, and Sophie started charging after the person who had stolen the phone. And okay. Sophie runs like a cartoon grandma. <laughs> like, very hunched over with tiny little steps. So she's, like, <laughs> running after this man, and he runs into, like, a sea of pretty much other criminals. I run <laughs> after Sophie to try and get her out. And then... for a good call. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone punched me in the face. Oh. We did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the criminal for a bit, and I did... Did I get the phone back? No, you did not get the phone back. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, get in those balls, my friend. In she goes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
It's a lanyard with Elaine written on it. A lanyard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. I was young and I was I was seven, about to turn eight. Mm -hmm. My mum was pregnant, having my little sister. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do, because I really, really hated her is that because I was the baby of the family there yeah. was no need for her to come and interrupt things and I wanted to name her right my mum she was like Tanya since you want to do it you can give her a middle name right and I was really angry at this so I wanted to give her a name that I didn't like and I gave her Elaine <laughs> purely because it was given to me because my mum was like trying to be cute, right? And was gave, gave me a lane so we could have the same middle name. And I hated it. So I was like, right, she's got to have it as well. Now we all fucking have it. This, my friends, is Chantel. Yeah! Elaine Moore. <laughs> Chantelle Elaine. Did you have any idea that you were named Elaine, middle name, out of hatred? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just thought that it was just the thing, like, in our family. It was just yeah. a tradition. She's called yeah. Elaine, second name, so you're going to be but called Elaine. thanks for telling the whole world my middle name. <laughs> I usually lie. <laughs> What's the matter with Elaine? What have we got against Elaine? It's boring, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I kind of think it really would. Chantal Elaine sounds beautiful because it, it comes does. off the end of Chantal. Chantal Elaine. It, yeah. Yeah. Like, it it's better than Tanya Elaine. It, yeah, it yeah. doesn't work with you. Doesn't uh, work with you. Hello. Chantal, thank you so much for coming on our show. Oh. Chantal Elaine. <laughs> this is a whiskey bottle. <laughs> oh, whiskey bottle. Yeah, that's got to be me. The, the transition from greengrocer to doing media stuff was Radio Four. Um, my old mate Charlie X, poshest greengrocer you ever met. Oh, yes. We ended up with our own show on Radio 4 as, as, as greengrocers. We thought we were turning up for a chat and it was our first ever live show. Oh, wow. And we used to supply hotels and restaurants and we'd been out with a gang of chefs the night before. Oi. I think we'd end up in Stringfellas till about four in the morning. Oh, string is at four. <laughs> So we go in to do our first... We thought we were just turn up for a chat and it's our first ever live show and they said, you two boys all right? We went, um, not really. And they said, could we get you anything? We went, well, actually, a little nip of whiskey. I'd be, so they put a bottle of whiskey for two nervous blokes in their first ever live oh. show. Oh. And, uh, and we drank most of it. Oh. We, I've got to confess now, and this is 25, 30 years ago, we did the first three shows off our faces. <laughs> off our, Listen, absolutely, it... I don't know how we can... T it was a live phone-in, it was called Veg Talk. <laughs> 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 It was three o'clock on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. Bring it back. I Did need, you, I me need and my more posh vegetables. Sure, and it was live. Did Can you I... name it when you were drunk? Because that <laughs> was the most like, What are we going to call it? Vegetal? <laughs> so that bottle of whiskey is me. Bless him, oh. Charlie, dear, dear friend of mine. And we did the first three live radio shows drunk. Pop another prop on the belt, Lou. <laughs> That's a good squeaking noise, isn't it? That's great. It's oh. A, it's a bag. Biohazard bag with... What's it got inside? It's a burger. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> if you supported a football team that got to a final in Wembley any time from 1991 to 1995 and I served you dinner, I'm really fucking sorry. <gasps> What the fuck did you do? When I was at university, the company I worked for had a contract at Wembley, but it wasn't like new, now shiny, ooh, I might have pulled pork Wembley. It was ooh. old... Old school. Ratty, I remember. But, yeah, yeah ratty I remember. Wembley. Yeah. I was, like, working on the grill. Great short order grill, man. And so, <laughs> flipping the burgers away, Mel, as you do. <laughs> Rather than lost the action. Thank you. <laughs> It was really hot, and they give you this kind of like McDonald's-y style oh. uniform, and they had this kind of quite scratchy, uh, scratchy, scratchy, itchy, scratch. hot as Hades, kind of a, yeah. a sweat top, polyester. I noticed that my sweat was pouring down my arm no. onto the meat that I was oh. cooking. So I saw this happening, and I pulled my hand <laughs> my arm, and then my pit boss turned up, and she said, "Why have you got your sleeves up?" And I said. Because if I put my sleeves down, my sweat is pouring onto the meat that I'm serving to these poor football fans. And she says, 
I don't care, it's company policy. <laughs> so, in front of these people who are buying this meat, I have to pull my sleeves down uh. and for th the next three hours <laughs> serve them essentially oh. burgers with added O'Leary. Oh! <laughs> Oh, my it. days. So basically what you're saying is that your sweat is actually one of the secret 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fire exit. Fire exit. Uh, oh, sure. Yes. yes. I thought I was doing a charity gig. Oh, here we go. It was the Camden Roundhouse. Yeah. And I thought I was doing a charity gig, but then I arrived and it was a corporate <gasps> gig. Oh. It was like a black tie oh. corporate event. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, like, you know, cabaret style, they've been drinking since six. Oh. Like, this is, this is unplayable, especially for me. I can't, I'm not, no, this is not my vibe. <laughs> um, and I'm absolutely terrified. And I'm on with Ed Gamble, and, and Ed, Ed, Ed's fine. Ed's absolutely fine with this. And I'm going, no, this is going to, no, what are you talking about? This is going to be a, a catastrophe. We can't go on. And I picked up my rucksack and I said, bye, Ed. <laughs> and I walked out of the fire exit. And the fire exit was alarmed. Oh, oh, what a great feeling, though, to get out of there, surely. It was better than doing comedy. Oh, <laughs> I've done one of those in that same venue for a charity. It was horrific, mate. They're yeah. so rich and so drunk, yes. they're just going... Wah, 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 like that. <laughs> On the auction list, it was so horrid and rich and disgusting, one of the auction prizes was a racehorse. No! Oh. Yeah. Oh my this God! Really posh auctioneer. What am I bid for the racehorse? There are 130,000, 132,000, 135,000. No. Awful. I wish I'd bloody known about fire exit. Trust me. That's not unforgivable, Sean. Yeah, no. yeah, you're Which right. Which is bad for this show. Understandable. It's bad for this show, but you've made me feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I once. Go on. I once stole a photo frame. What? When I was in Spain, yeah, a little <laughs> photo frame. It was oh, awful. Got it back to my Spanish exchanges uh, flat. <laughs> Couldn't sleep all night looking at the photo frame, which I really loved. And she'd actually kind of nudged me and said, go on, go on, steal it, you know. I can't remember what steal it is in Spanish, but then. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and you know what I did, though? The next day... I, I, I put it put it back. <laughs> oh, you coward! <laughs> that makes me really good. <laughs> <laughs> but I was almost more scared putting it back because imagine being caught for that. Yeah, that would be, that would have been embarrassing. Yeah. I got away with it, <laughs> and I felt the relief mm. I felt when that photo frame was back. On I the wish shelf. you had been caught trying to put it back, and then you had to try and explain. Yes. In, in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm returning a photo frame that I feel bad for stealing 24 yeah. hours ago. Yeah. That's not in the <laughs> syllabus, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> anyway, I came out really well. <laughs> uh, it's a bottle of milk. Ringing any bells, Maisie? Yeah. When we were little, me and my little brother, when we used to walk to school, we walked past our next-door neighbour, Mary's, um, who was a lovely little old lady who would get milk on her doorstep. And we used to go... We, we had a game called Milk Plot Mary, <laughs> <laughs> where we'd go and get acorns, and it was really satisfying to plop them through the yeah. foil lid. It's really bad, but it... It sounded nice, the, the noise it made. I can imagine it would be satisfying. If I had to do it, it would go... <laughs> plop, like that. Yeah. So we would do it every morning we walked to school, we'd go, quick, milk plop Mary, and get an... <laughs> you got to make your own fun up north. <laughs> and then <laughs> you'd, we'd just drop a, an acorn into a, into a thing, and we did it every morning. And then um, one time we heard, like, Mary talking over the fence to our, our mum and dad, going... You should be really proud of Maisie and Danny. They're really good kids because some of the kids on this street are horrible. They fill my milk with acorns every morning. <laughs> and she was, like, really upset. She was like, but you, Jill, should be really chuffed with Maisie and Danny. They're clearly lovely kids and would never think of it. And we felt so, so bad. Did you ever tell her? No, but we carried on playing Milk Plot Mary. <laughs> like no, you didn't. <laughs>